You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. I'm coming to you live from my friend's car in Dallas, Texas. I um, wasn't planning to do this show on the road, but that's what makes these shows fun. As a startup, you're moving around and making things happen. So this show stays true to that kind of vibe and uh, the show must go on. And uh, first off, I want to say uh, a big shout out to our sponsors at La Casa del Camino in Laguna Beach. Thank you so much. Michael Solberg, Family Wines, Leah Solberg. Thank you so much. And I have we have a guest today from overseas, somebody with an amazing title for a book and a concept in a way of being. His name is Thane Laurie. Thane, welcome. Thank you so much for making time to be on the startup. Oh, thank you so much for asking me to be on the show. It's a great pleasure. So thanks. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, I know there's quite the time difference. So thank you for being committed to this. And you have something really amazing. I, I fell in love with the title. I love the concepts. Why don't you introduce to us, you know, your concept, the name of your book and, and how it started? Okay, a pleasure. Yeah, I, I wrote a book and it was published in December last year in, in the States. Uh, and the book is called The Buddhist CEO. That is my first book. And it's all about uh, a modern day man who finds himself becoming a chief executive of a fairly large not for profit company. And he tries to lead that company by his morals. He's a Buddhist and he, he wants to lead it as a Buddhist CEO. So he wants to try and treat his, his, his staff, uh, everything he does within the company. He tries to do it through a lens of compassion, treating people well, and trying to do things in the right way. And it has a great effect upon his company. He um, it, it it thrives. He, he manages to change it. It was once it was a struggling company when he takes it over, but he starts to treat people well, build this world place culture, a world class culture. People respond to it positively, and it goes really well for the first three years. But as he as he goes on in his in CEO journey, he finds that people don't, do don't always come with him, even though he's trying to treat them well. And the book follows this inner struggle, this inner dialogue, but how he tries to deal with this as a Buddhist. He wants to treat people well, but he finds people plot against him. He finds some difficult staff really really make his life difficult. So it's all about his inner journey, how he tries to how he tries to deal with these things. Although he wants to lead as a compassionate leader, he finds it doesn't always it's not always easy, and he comes up against a lot of obstacles. But he always keeps going. He's always committed to try and do the right thing. Love it, love this, and, and there's more need in the spaces that we spend so many hours of our lives in to just you know make it a peaceful functioning place. I know that's a tall order sometimes. <laughs> We're all <laughs> a little dysfunctional, but you know, you, you spend, when you look back, you're like, wow, I really spent a lot of time with these people, places or things. And uh, having it be copacetic is important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we spend so much of our time in, in the in the workplace and um, yeah, we want to make a positive experience. If you go to work, uh, yeah. whether you're the leader or an employee and it's a it's it's not a positive experience it can have a really detrimental effect upon people's well-being so uh the buddhist ceo can see that and he really wants to try and create a company where people are empowered and um, to try and you know, do something positive have kind of some sort of say over their daily working tasks at the same time he also wants to challenge them because it's not a free-for-all either he wants to set up he sets up very strong values for the company how he wants everybody to perform and to behave. He tries to hold people to that. But as long as they stick within those parameters, you know, he tries to make it a, a positive place for people to work. And uh, yeah, people respond to that as well, positively. Most people, <laughs> there are those one yeah, or two who yeah. challenge them along the way as well. And that's what, is, what he finds it difficult. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Wow. Wow. Now, you know, for the listeners and viewers out there that might be contemplating writing a book, and something with purpose. And I mean, every every book has a purpose, but with, some, with more intentional um, purpose and, and putting some better things out there in the universe, how would one go about that? I, I know you can't give away your secret sauce, but if someone's just aspiring to try, you know, what advice would you give them? 
Yeah, what I thought the long and hard about what to write my book about. And to start with, I had all these wonderful ideas. And um, the more and more I thought about it and the more and more I got advice about it was write about something you know, something that you know quite well. So I, I had actually been a chief executive in my own life. And I'm also a Buddhist. And the more and more I thought about it, I thought, wow, that, there's a story in that, you know, you know, and, and what I know best. So I think write about something you know well, um, something you're passionate about, something you've got, you feel has got a purpose. For me, I've always been passionate about leadership and I've always been passionate about Buddhism. Um, and I've always felt it's a way of life that people maybe didn't know that much about. So I always thought maybe I could bring a bit of attention to it and maybe que get people to, to question themselves if they're leaders of their own company or if they run a business, you know, how, how do you do this that makes a difference? Yes, you want to make money, but at the same time, can you make a difference to people's lives? And uh, in another way, through sort of culture and workplace culture and treating people well. So something you're passionate about, something you know about, and something you really believe in is where I would, I think, would be a good starting place. Lovely. I love it. All right. Well, thank you for that piece of wisdom, word of wisdom there. And I think you can't go wrong. I mean, I think, like you said, it shouldn't feel like a job. You know, you should get joy out of it and yeah. make a difference. And, and uh me what came to mind you know this year as um pardon me sorry about that um yeah so that's what they came to mind with me this year about um okay try again. working working smarter not harder and just getting some balance in there you know as workaholics we just go 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 i think it's time to Find some, how can you give us some tips on balance, actually? <laughs> yeah, I could certainly try. I mean, one of the things that always um, appealed to me about Buddhism was that particularly the type of Buddhism that the, the main character in the book follows, Soto Zen, there's different types of Buddhism, different schools. But what, what it kind of teaches is that um, to live an enlightened life. Pardon me, to... sorry, one second. Sorry about that. I had a little technical issue. Please start That's again. That's okay. Yeah. One of the things that appealed to me about that type of Buddhism is it actually says to us that to live a happy or an, an enlightened life is to actually live in the now, to live in the moment. I think often in modern society, we're taught that um, to live a happy or fulfilled life, we're always looking forward to something to come, like a new holiday or a new car or a new house. It's not to say that those things are something to look forward to because I, I enjoy those things too. But what it's really pointing to is that to find really ha happiness is to live in the now and enjoy enjoy your life here and now. So am I fully engaged when I'm speaking to you? Um, am I fully engaged when I go, go to my work and, and do what I've got to do? Am I fully engaged when I'm making my tea or cleaning my house? Or you know, that Actually, enjoyment can be found in everyday things, even in mundane things. So things that maybe seem superficial, everything has a worth, everything has a value, just because just it exists. And uh, I just found that a very a liberating way to look at the world, that you don't actually need that much to look forward to, to be happy. And even when you're unwell or things aren't going that well, you can still have a, a steadiness, still have a groundedness and a peacefulness just from being present to the moment. Whatever's in that moment, actually, even if it's pleasant, mundane, or indifferent. So, to me, that was quite a, an eye opener. And I think too often in the modern world, we're always striving for the future. And we need an element of that. But actually, life, life can be very happy just being here now. <laughs> Beautiful. Being here now, present. And um, where can people find your book? Why don't we do a few plugs if, if they want to get into this way of being? Go ahead. Yeah, well, in my book, uh, The Buddhist CEO, you can buy it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, other online retailers. But Amazon and Barnes & Noble are probably the best places to find it. Uh, the Buddhist CEO, just, just type that in and it should come up. Um, I also have a website. It's my name. Thanelaurie.com. It's an unusual name, so it's T H A N E L A W R I E.com. Go on there. 
you also have access to my uh, Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts. And I try and bring a little bit of um, Zen peacefulness into, da into daily life. So I do, a, I do a Zen poem every morning on Twitter. Just got quite a good following now. So I put one out every morning, my time. So it's, yeah, so it's about 9 a.m. my time, which is about 1 a.m. your time. So we have any weeks it should be out. But uh, yeah, so yeah. I do that. So if you want to get hold of the book, probably Amazon, Barnes & Noble are the two best places to, to find it. Some bookstores will have it, and you should be able to order it through bookstores as well. But in, in, in okay. all the links to where you can buy it are on the website as well. So, fainlaurie.com, if you want to make it simple, you can click on the Amazon link there. there on. Yes, okay, we'll keep it simple. That's what fainlaurie.com, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Pick yeah. Up the Buddhist CEO. Leave us with a Buddhist, can you leave us with a little word or a little something without giving too much away? A little quote? A little quote. Well, um, put you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I put him on the spot. But, um, no, I, I can tell you a couple of little things. The, the the book. What I think is interesting about the book is it's about a modern person, and also there's a lot of the. It's a lot of inner thoughts because he, he, how he struggles with things, how he tries to apply his Buddhism to the workplace. So some of the some people have described the book as a page turner because it describes some of the very difficult situations he goes through. In the workplace, wow. so when people plot against him, he's taken to court. He's taken all these. And it's how he tries to deal with that. Then it switches to other other environments. So he he goes to seek solace and support from a monastery. So he's, although he's working as a chief executive, he goes on some of his holidays, his vacations, for one week at a time to live with the monks. It's how it's that kind of difference between the the monastery and he's back in the workplace and high pressure environments. So. I think um, I think people would people would enjoy that kind of um, people say it's like a roller coaster ride, but it has yeah. a peaceful yeah. feel to it throughout the whole thing. Yes, love it, love it, and um, I'm still working my way through it. Full disclosure, but I'm really excited to to get give you the news that I finished it, and I think our viewers and list, listeners will love this. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thane. An absolute pleasure, Monique. Thank you so much for having me on. It really has been a pleasure because you and I have communicated by, yeah. via emails and we've always got a bit of connection there. So now I've actually got to speak to you in person. and It's been a real pleasure. Oh, oh my God. It's, it's absolutely my pleasure. And I agree. And we got more coming from Thane. He's, you know, in the, in the lab with these ideas. So stay tuned. Get this one first, guys. And let's, you know, implement some of these ideas. I think it's going to help everyone uh, moving forward, the collective anyway. Thank you again for being here, Thane. Thank you so much. A great pleasure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. See you. All right, guys. That was Thane Laurie picking up the Buddhist CEO. Okay, the Buddhist CEO. And I think I've got my next guest, right, Sam? We have someone here on on the line. Okay, I got a little chat. Sorry for the technical issue, guys. Um, like I said, I'm in. Um, I am in. Uh, Dallas, Texas. I was shooting something pretty special um, and hopefully, you know, groundbreaking. I have a lot on my plate, as we all do, entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, I to make time to come down here, it must be something, you know, pretty, pretty dynamic. But there's some, you know, social justice um, projects that I've been usually that I've been used to doing lately. So I think it's within the same lane as that. So when I have an announcement, I'd love to share it with you guys. But that's why I'm in my car. That's the long way around it. Uh, or my friend's car here today, uh, traveling and doing the show. So we can keep a lot of things going at one time. A shout out to um, everybody helping out with the Oscars, Oscars Week Celebrity Gifting Suite. Thank you so much. It's on Monday, March 6th. And uh, we've got some great brands coming. There's still um, last minute space if you want to do swag bags. So you can reach out to us at Cap Aquarius Media on Instagram. Just send us a DM and we'll get back to you. Or you can email us at capaquariusmedia at gmail.com. There'll be about 100 to 125 nominees, celebrities, uh, press, media at this event. So if you want to hear more about it, I'm happy to send you an email and uh, see if you can, can join us. Um, yeah, so I have um, updates coming with the pandemic project obviously those are going to film festivals we are you know it's, it's a it's just it's a hard thing I've, I've been documenting it here it's just kind of the 
steps you have to go to, to to make it and i'm not exempt you know to try something new so we are very much in full swing still so you'll hear announcements for if you haven't seen the trailer you can go to youtube uh the pandemic project documentary that's four words the pandemic project documentary and give us a like check it out um there's no political leaning in it it's about stories about you and i and people around the world america getting over and getting through COVID. so it's a really important subject i think and uh hopefully you guys will tune in all right let's see if our second guest is here um sometimes it it's rough on sundays but uh shout out to everyone watching and listening thank you so much for supporting the channel uh go back in the in the history on this channel there's so many shows i think we're in almost to 200 episodes um I think we're in the 170, 180. I have to do my math. But if you guys want to take a look back on down memory lane with the other um, the other shows we've had, we've covered a lot of topics, a lot of brands. Just a shout out in general to all the startups um, hanging on, you know, growing, scaling, um, retiring it. Just a shout out to you guys. It's such a just a, a really unique way to be. And we need all the support we can get because the newest ideas out there are important to realize for the future. So, um, what else? I guess you got the you've got the uh, film update, Oscars week update. Um, yeah. There's, oh, here we are, Miss Hillary. The, hello, Hillary. How are you? Well, hello. <laughs> it's so good to see you, Monique. It's a pleasure to see you. I, I just was explaining to my viewers and listeners, I'm in my friend's car in Texas because, yes, we are the startup and we keep doing it. So we keep it to you live and real. You know and what? Just... <laughs> I love it. And I tried to get on via a different way and I couldn't. So here I am. I'm on my phone. It's all good. <laughs> see, we pushed through, though. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. I'm so glad you did. Um, so um, with Without further ado, please introduce yourself to the viewers and listeners and tell us about this amazing book. Well, my name is Hillary DeCesar. I am the founder and CEO of The Relaunch Co. And as you mentioned, I did just launch a book called Relaunch, Spark Your Heart to Ignite Your Life. And it was just in the Grammy swag bag for all of the entertainers and presenters. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> that's that's the way that's the way to roll it out, really. <laughs> that's Let me awesome. tell you something. Actually, it, it came out in soft copy about six months ago, and we were contacted by someone who said, Hey, would you ever consider this? And I'm like, heck yeah, this is the greatest thing. I'm so excited. And then then I thought, oh gosh, I hope we actually get selected. And we did. And it's been wow. really fun to, you know, to to see how many people now are starting to read the book. And, you know, I think the best part of it is everyone these days is having a tough time with moving forward in their personal, professional life. We always, you know, right now it seems like we're, we're, we're tuning out a lot. We're getting stuck a lot. We're feeling unmotivated, unfulfilled. And I think it is, it's exactly what people need to be able to tune in and hear the things that are right there in front of them, whether it's in business or their personal life. And in the book, we, we describe all about 3HQ, your head, your heart, and your higher self. Wow. I like that. That's well. And here, you know what? Can I do something with you really fast? I'm not really sure how long we have, but I'll go yes. fast with this. Okay, are you willing to, uh, can I coach you a little? Yes, ask me anything. Let's do it. Okay, so the first part of getting out of your head so that you can tap into your heart, tap into that place where you know you have the ability to really be in alignment and love what mm. you're doing, you have to be able to tune in. And so there's a process, four-step process, super easy, really fun. Maybe this is why the Grammys liked it so much. And okay. the, first, the first step is I want you to think right now, Monique, about your biggest challenge that you have in 
your business right now? What is just kind of like looming out there? It's not moving in the direction you want it to go. What would you say that is? Oh, wow. Right. Very transparent on this show. Um, <laughs> having having the uh, liquidity to make multiple things happen at once while they're waiting and um, manifesting, you know, having that flow of capability capability capital <laughs> to move things quicker okay so now that you've got that this is very head based okay mm -hmm. you know that you want liquidity to make multiple things happen in your business yeah. forward momentum progress that's what we're looking for step mm -hmm. two einstein said you can't solve a problem at the level it was created you can't solve Ooh. a problem at the level it was created. It yeah. took me so long to figure out what that really meant. No, yeah, I think, yeah, tell us. I think I but, know, but. <laughs> yeah, and now I get it. And I'm going to teach mm -hmm. you a simple way to do that. When okay. you are trying to figure something out and you are frustrated, you are like, you know, you haven't reached where you ultimately thought you would be in your business, in your life right now. You're at a mm -hmm. low energy level. Everything is energy. And so mm -hmm. if you try to move things forward when you're at a low energy, you're going to mm -hmm. get the same results you've already gotten. So what we need to do is mm -hmm. up level you. We've got to get you to tune in. And the way we do that in step two is I ask you, what is the song that when you hear it, it just lights you up? You can't be at a low energy when you're hearing that song. What is that song for you? Oh, right now it's a song by Faithless, God rest him, called Woozy. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're saying, okay, Faithless. Yeah, that's the artist. Yeah, Faithless. Okay, okay. Yeah. and it's called, say the name again, because you kind of clicked. It's it's called Woozy. Okay, Woozy. Uh, which is okay, hilarious. I love it. So <laughs> which is hilarious. Here. Yes, I love it here, which is so perfect because Monique, I want you to sit here right now. Close okay. your eyes as long as you're not driving. I don't think you're driving in that car. I no, want no. you to I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of Woozy. And I want mm -hmm. you to take it from your head to your toes. I want you to just, you're in the car, so you can't really like move too much, but move around, hear it, embrace it, let it light and fill you up. Okay. okay. All right. I see it. I see you're like moving and grooving, girl. So now, step okay. three. Step three, step three is if you could imagine right now, which I want you to do, yes. tons of liquidity to make multiple things happen in your business. Awesome. Ah. Like money is just coming in. Like, wow, what would that yes. look like? What would that look like? Tune back into Woozy. Get that mm. back into your body. What would, can you see it right now? Can you see, see what that it. would look like? Okay. I want you to really close your eyes again, tune in again. And okay. is there a vibrant color that's really coming out for you in this image, in this visualization? It's, it's red and yellow. Ooh, okay. What we're doing right now, I, I do everything around neuroscience, around making sure that we are elevating ourselves. So okay. right now, as you're focused on the red and the yellow, I want you to quickly, when I say click, when I say the words click, you are going to open your eyes, shut them, and take an internal picture of that image, that visualization. Are you ready? I'm ready. Click. Open, shut. Click. Open, shut. Last picture. Click open shut now i want you to open your eyes you have this image now you've taken an internal picture in order to have a business that mm -hmm. is exactly where you want it to go it has to be something that you already have within you your mm -hmm. business is a direct reflection of you and wow it's right. you now have a photo album Monique, there is a photo album in your mind. So yeah. step four okay. is step four is what is the one thing you could do right now today to go for and create momentum towards those pictures? Yes. 
the answer Tune back today. In. Tune back in. Tune back in. Woozy, what is it? What is it? Elevate yourself again. Tune ask for in. the ask for the contract. Ask for the contract. Ask for the contract. So yeah. now you're gonna go after we get off after your radio show is done. <laughs> and okay. guess what, Monique? Guess what you're gonna do? What am I gonna do? You're gonna ask for the contract. I'm going to ask for the contract. <laughs> it's really that simple. It's really that simple. <laughs> why, why haven't I done that? <laughs> you're but you're there, awesome. <laughs> there's the greatest part. I mean, I've been coaching C-suite yeah. executives, entrepreneurs for over 20 years. I've run multiple businesses in the Silicon Valley. I've been at Oracle for over 10 years. And, mm. and what I want to say is that when you can tune in and tune in multiple times during the day, Tune in before you go on stage. Tune in before you go on your show. Tune in before you put a negotiation contract in place. Tune in before you hit the live to do something on social media. Because when you're elevating yourself, mm -hmm. it takes the law of attraction to a whole new level, which is the law of resonance. You are now resonating with what you want to be bringing in. Oh, I believe that so much. And you're giving... Giving you're giving um Esther Hicks vibes and uh that's I'll some high that, level I'll take that as a huge compliment. You are on some high level stuff. Yes, please take it and keep it and put it in your pocket. It's um it's fantastic and, and you're really doing some light work for people and, and I'm excited. Where can everyone pick this up? Let's let's show them where they can find your book. Well, first off, you could go to our website, which is the relaunchco.com therelaunchco.com and you can take a quiz to see where are you in your head, your heart, your higher self? What kind of leader are you? What kind of entrepreneur are you? And then you can always go to Amazon and it's the it's it's relaunch spark your heart to ignite your life. Just type in relaunch and Hillary and you'll it'll come up for you. Now Hillary is your book cuz I'm still getting through it. I have many books to read and you're in that stack. So please forgive me. I want to speak honestly of that, of how far, but um, isn't there a love connection with this, with this uh, technique, with this way of being? So, here's the thing. I want to, t I want to actually allow people to turn into their own manifestation magnets. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time, Hey, I'm a businesswoman. This is what I do, but you know what? You are not one area. You're not siloed. What we need to realize is people that say, you know what, I'm just focusing on my job right now. I'm just focusing on my kids right now. And you're eliminating that one area where we're here on this earth for love. That is it. That is what lights us up. And when you, mm -hmm. and when you tune out to it, you lose it and you don't have it. And I want to increase the ability and opportunity for people to have that the strongest sense of love. So yes, I have had a relaunch. I've had multiple relaunches. One of the most significant was I got divorced, three little kids. I'm out there raising, you know, tons of money. You talk about your you talk about liquidity and all that. I'm I'm raising it and I'm burning through it and yes. I I basically I'm basically <laughs> gone all it's the time. It's funny how they go hand in hand. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't that true? Yeah. But at yes. this point I realized, you know what? I want, I want to find somebody, but I wasn't, I wasn't making the time. So what I did, and I talk about it in the book, is I created this idea that could you be the entrepreneur of your love life? Can you treat your love life like it is part of the business? Because it is, it's the business of you. It's making sure that you're at that again, tuning into the to the man that you want or the woman that you want, and then making sure that you're elevated to that level. I have a lot of people come to me and here's the funniest thing. In fact, I never talk about this. I don't even know why it must oh. be. It's a Sunday, but I actually was so- <laughs> Confess. Yeah, I'm thinking this is confessions of like, you know, a Silicon Valley, a Silicon Valley CEO. Yes, I, I like I, that. <laughs> was so fascinated with matchmaking. I went yeah. to New York and I became a certified matchmaker with the Matchmaking Institute because wow. I wanted to understand what was it. I love relationships. I love love, but I wanted yeah. to make sure that 
if there is some type of like, if I could help people become their own matchmakers, remember relationships are everywhere you look. They're the relationship you have with yourself, relationship mm -hmm. you have with peers in your business, partnerships in your business. There's mm -hmm. relationships with, you know, your your personal spouse, your, your boyfriends, girlfriends, the person that you mm -hmm. want, the kids, the friends. I mean, relationships yeah. rule the roost. It's yeah. like everything. And so when I started to look at this and I was trying to help myself find I had been uh, single at that point after my first divorce for seven years. And I was starting to get like, okay, Hillary, it's time. This is time, <laughs> you know, come on, girl. Yeah. You know, I, I'm still yeah. ready to love up somebody. I need to do this. And so I realized um, that I was really looking at it from a very singular portfolio. I wasn't looking at it from a diversified portfolio and how was I really going to be attacking this? And so I literally tuned in, I tuned in, I created exactly what I was looking for. Wow. And then I realized, like we said, you can't solve a problem at the level it was created. I wasn't mm -hmm. being that woman. I wasn't being the woman that would be able to attract that amazing guy. And so yeah. I started, I started to look at, you talk about an avatar and you know who is your ideal client well this is going to be my ideal man <laughs> so yes. i had to i had to really understand what okay. what was it about me that i needed to change that i needed to elevate and mm. it got it got into the 3 hq it was no longer mm. about iq of the 60s 70s 80s how intelligent that wasn't going to help me it wasn't mm. about eq even of the 90s mm. 3HQ is the new way that you can literally access your power source inside of you, elevate yourself, tune in, and guess what? What? Six weeks after going through all this, I ended up having three dates and the third guy I dated was my husband. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, turned I in. I love that. He wasn't my husband at that time. He became my right. husband. He became it very quickly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. And I, you know, I hate to cut this short because we could talk all day about this and you and just we have so much to learn. Would you come back? We'd love oh to have gosh. you back. And I would love to have you on my show. Done. Okay. Done. Done. Double done. <laughs> Let's do it. And it won't be from my car or my friend's car the next time. But <laughs> thank you, Hillary, for sharing this. And I hate to cut you off, but once again, give everybody your handles where they can find you and pick yeah. up the fabulous book. Yes, you can go to Amazon and it is Relaunch Spark Your Heart to Ignite Your Life or go to our website, therelaunchco.com. Thank you, Hillary. I just, I'm blown away. We're going to see you soon again. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you so much. Ciao. All right, you guys. Hillary G. Sinclair with... Um, Ignite your life. Th this book is going to be amazing. Looks like my lighting is going again. I'm on the road, guys. Um, we're here with the startup. And um, check out her book. I think it's really going to be something that we can all use to get a little balance. So, um, Sam, do we have um, my next? Jay Bear, how's it going? Monique, what is up? Should I get in the car? Because I could set I mean this up. <laughs> I love it. You are working. I love it. I love the effort. I love the hustle. You're mobile. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. The show must stay on the road. I mean, I love it. Kind of com combine two sayings there. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers and listeners? It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, thanks so much. I'm Jay Bear. I am a business growth and customer experience researcher, author, expert, and speaker. I'm a seventh generation entrepreneur. I've written six best selling books. I founded five multi million dollar companies of my own. I actually spent a lot of time helping startups and early stage companies succeed. I've got a new research project called The Time to Win, which is all about the relationship between responsiveness and revenue. You can download the research report for no cost at thetimetowin.com. But, Monique, the thing is, we all care about time and how we spend it more than ever. And as a business person, you can take advantage of that and make it your competitive differentiator. Wow. I would love to dive deep into this as, as much as we can today, Jay, and of course, picking up your book. Give us a little bit of how you found how this came to be. 
How yeah. did we get here? Yeah. It was, I said, I've, I've written six books in the past and all the books that I've, that I've written, which are about customer experience and marketing and business growth, they've all had at least a, a chapter on, on speed and how it, it does matter to customers. But you know, the pandemic changed our relationship with time. It made us realize, Monique, that tomorrow is not promised. Nothing is guaranteed. And mm. that each and every one of us have and will only ever have 1,440 minutes a day. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are or what you are. You get 1,440. It doesn't matter if you're Elon Musk or someone experiencing homelessness. It doesn't matter if you're an American or a Venezuelan, a grandfather, a grandson, a saint or a sinner. You get 1,440 minutes and you can't buy more than that and you can't get more than that. In fact, time is literally the only resource that is shared evenly on this planet. Wow. And the pandemic made us realize maybe we should pay more attention to that. So a lot of the trends that we talk about in business today, Monique, things like quiet quitting and the great resignation and work from home and leisure travel where you bring your kids on you know, work trips and all that kind of stuff. It's all the same trend. Yeah. And the trend is we care about time and how we spend it more than ever. So how does this apply to business? Well, if you give your customers time, they will give you money. If you mm. cost your customers time, it will cost you money. Wow. Let's say that again for the seats in the back, because that was really, <laughs> really great. If you give your customers time, they will give you money. And if you cost your customers time, it will cost you money. Let me give you an example of how this, how this works in practice, if I may. So okay. not long ago, probably three, probably four weeks ago now, uh, I needed to hire a painter for some work here at the house. And I got three bids as, as one typically does. First painter got back to me in four hours. Second painter got back to me in a day. Third mm. painter got back to me in two days. Mm. Which painter did I hire? The four hour one. <laughs> the four hour one. And Absolutely. that was not the least expensive painter. In fact, it was the most expensive painter. But today we often interpret speed as caring oh. because we all play this mental game, which says, well, wait a second. If it takes them a long time to get back to me before they have my money, how responsive are they going to be once they have my money? Wow. So if you are in any kind of competitive situation, I don't care what kind of business it is, any mm -hmm. kind of competitive situation, you've got to do whatever possible to be first. Because here's the scary and insidious part about this, Monique. Mm -hmm. When you lose on speed, it is almost always invisible. So let me give you a little, a little a quiz. Okay. Painter number two and painter number three who didn't get my business, even though they were less expensive. Why do mm -hmm. they think they lost? Uh, probably for their price. Exactly. We always think it's price. I've been a strategist for 30 years. I've worked with 40 Fortune 500 companies. I've worked with 700 brands. Tell me the truth. It's almost never price. But here's the challenge. They think it's price, but it was actually speed. So what happens is they drop their price. Another competitive bid, they still lose. They're cheaper, but they're still not any they're faster. Losing, they're like, they're wow. cheaper, they're losing more. Right. Like, wow, it's, <laughs> oh getting pretty, it's getting pretty tough to get a painting job in this town. So they drop their price again, and they still wow. don't get it. It's only the fourth go-round where they've given away all their profit that they get hired. Because at that point, the consumer is like, well, geez, if they're going to be that much cheaper, I'll take my chances on responsiveness. Wow. It's invisible. When you lose on speed, it's never on a spreadsheet. It's never on a report. You've got to fix it. Wow. Jay, you are on it. You are teaching. Today is Sunday, and we are getting the word today. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> grateful for the very, you know, when you think about it, that's pretty visible if I sit and really, I don't know how I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like, I should have known that. Uh but well, you said I mean, like I said, though, it's always been important, yeah. but but Monique, don't feel bad because it's more important now. I mean, we really do care about our time more than we used to. In, in my mm -hmm. research, the time to win.com is where you can download it. 83% of customers say that they care as much about speed as they do about price. Because time is money. Time yeah. is money, right? More time yeah. with your kids, more time with your loved ones, more time to smell the roses, more time to be in the car, more time to do whatever. Uh, we just, we, we want to manage our own time better. And the last thing we want to do is, is have some company uh, making us sit around and waste time. But, and, you know, we, we've become a little more selfish with our time. 
Totally. And that's okay. But businesses need to understand that and use it as a competitive advantage. Most of the, most of your competitors aren't thinking about this. This is the lever that you can pull this year and next year to outperform your competition in whatever business that you're in. And I'll tell you one of the best ways to do it practically. Number one, try to be fast in a competitive situation. Number two, Monique, offer a fast pass. My research found that 25%, one in four customers will pay as much as 50% more if they don't have to wait. One in four customers will pay as much as 50% more if they don't have to wait. Now, there are fast passes around us, right? TSA Pre is a fast pass. Clear is a fast pass. Pay more, wait less. But this works in every single industry. I don't care if you're an acupuncturist, a chiropractor, a nail salon, an attorney, a landscaper, a software company, offer a fast pass. Now, not all your customers are going to want it, but those who do want it, want it bad. And it's just, it's just free money. It's just free money for you. And it's such a simple technique to tweak and you're in control 100% of it, guys. All you got to do is shuffle your customer schedule. That's it. You're just shuffling the schedule. You're not doing anything different. You're just shuffling the schedule. And big companies are starting to figure this out. I was at Caesars Palace doing a speech two weeks ago and I got there about 2.30. And usually when you go to a casino in Vegas, they're like, hey, rooms aren't ready till four. Come back at four and we'll maybe give you keys, right? That's the usual deal. Yeah. And Monique, they said, Mr. Bear, your room's not ready till after four o'clock. However... If However, you give us thirty dollars <laughs> right now, thirty extra dollars will give you a key. Would you like a room? Yes, I would. So I did the math on this, Monique. I went out wow. and I figured out how many rooms they have, how many guests they have per week, etc. So I did all the math. One point yeah. eight million dollars a year in pure profit just for offering a fast pass. Wow. You guys, we have to have Jay back. Another great guest that needs the whole hour. Jay. Where can we find your book one more time? Would you come back and speak with, with, with me again? I'd be delighted. So much more to say about speed and responsiveness. Uh, the research report and the website, there's infographics, there's stats, there's videos. It's thetimetowin.com. You're an angel. Just a major talent. Thank you so much for sharing your Sunday with me. Appreciate it. Take care. See you soon, Jay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Wow, some great tips. And I'm losing a little light, guys, but I have one more guest on. So um, we're going to keep the show going, even though, yeah. All right. Well, so guys, um, while we're waiting for the next guest, um, thank you for tuning in. Amazing authors and entrepreneurs and great tips today. I feel like this, this is one of the best shows. And usually, like, when I'm doing one from the car and I'm having technical issues, I really have the best shows because um you have to kind of make it. So just, you know, encouraging thoughts for, you, for all the startups out there. And again, thank you so much to Michael Solberg Family Wines. Shout out to La Casa del Camino. Thank you so much for your support. Oh, and Next Level, our friend Shane Hyman. Thank you so much. I am still in the car here, guys, in Dallas, finishing up this show. Um, the project that I'm working on is really, really special, and I can't wait to share it with you. And that's the reason why we're um, in the car today, because it's something very important and um, needs to be needs to be shared. Um, we're also doing some casting. Uh, we're finishing up the endemic project. There's a, a spring trip coming up. Uh, if you have any endemic stories that you want to share, email me at Cap Aquarius Media. Excuse me, at Cap, Cap, Aquarius, Cap Aquarius Media on Instagram. Email me, Cap Aquarius Media at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram if you don't, if you haven't. We'd love to have you. It's at the startup with Monique LeRae. And um, Sam, let me see what your notes are saying here. All right. That's all right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So another week, week and a half for the Oscar Suite Celebrity Gifting Suite in Beverly Hills. Um, if you have any swag bag items that you'd like to include, there'll be 100 celebrities media and press there. We'd love to have you and include you. You can email me at capaquariusmedia at gmail.com. And um, if you're not following my personal page, at Monique Lorray Stinson. And uh, unless my guest is going to show up, it looks like we're going to probably wrap. Sam, um, let me know there. Shout out to Sam, LA Talk Radio. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So if without further ado, if my, uh, my other guest is going to be here, Thank you so much for joining me. 
What will you start up today? I'll see you next weekend. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.